Hey everyone, it's Mr. Veve, and this lesson is on plant response and reproduction. So let's get right into it with our first key concept. Plant systems work together to help the plant respond to its environment. So those types of responses come in four forms that we're going to look at today. Uh, one is called phototropism, then we have gravitropism, hydrotropism, and thigmotropism. So a tropism is just a response, and the uh, first word there is going to kind of give us an idea of what that is a response to. So the first one, phototropism, well photo means light, so that is a plant's response to light. And now we know plants tend to grow towards a light source because sunlight is a major reactant um, in uh, photosynthesis. So plants need uh, sunlight in order to grow, and so they will tend to grow towards that. Now the way they achieve this is by the use of a growth hormone called auxin, and that is released on the uh, opposite side of the stem where the uh, sunlight is. So if you see in the picture, if the sunlight is coming from the right side, the auxin molecules will uh, be released on the left side of that stem, causing the stem to elongate from that side and thus bend towards the sunlight. So auxin, that growth hormone, helps it bend the stem towards the, uh, the light source. So the next one, gravitropism, or sometimes called geotropism. This is a plant's response to gravity. This one is quite simple. If you look at the seedlings that you see on the right, stems grow up against gravity and roots go down uh, with gravity. So stems up and uh, roots down. That is the plant's response to gravity in that sense. Uh, hydrotropism, this one's pretty easy. This Plants need water, right? Just like they need sunlight. Plant roots tend to grow towards water. That is hydrotropism. And then finally we have thigmotropism. Now thigmo uh, refers to touch. Now uh, plants will respond to touch in a couple of different ways. You see you have a Venus flytrap on the left hand side there. So when they feel um, their prey in the uh, certain area where that mouth is open, when they feel that touch, the mouth will close, trapping the prey. Or if you look at a plant that grows um, in, a, in a spiral sort of pattern around something that it's holding on to, it will start growing in that curling uh, fashion because it feels what it's growing on. So it's responding to the touch there. Now, uh, we often talk about tropisms as either, as either being positive or negative. So a positive tropism is uh, something that is uh, happening toward the stimulus. Negative would be away from the stimulus. So you have to know what the stimulus is in order to be able to classify it as positive or negative. Great example here is when the plant grows towards the sunlight, that means it is positive phototropism because it is going towards that light stimulus. You see in the picture on the bottom, um, we know geotropism or gravitropism is response to gravity, so that means the stems growing up would be negatively geotrophic, or geotropic, and the roots growing down would be with gravity towards the stimulus, so that would be positively geotropic. So let's look at our second key concept in this video. So plants reproduce asexually or sexually. So let's talk about how they accomplish both. First one is asexual reproduction, and this is sometimes called vegetative propagation. Uh, a few different ways here. Um, so if you look at the examples here, they uh, um, achieve this by using runners or plantlets or rhizomes. This is when the new plant actually just grows off of the parent plant. So daughter plants growing off uh, the, the parent plant, and they are just basically exact genetic copies of this. So a little plantlet would be something uh, that grows off of a leaf or something like that. The, you see in strawberry plants things called runners where they just kind of keep spreading, but the important part is um, the genes of each of these plants are exactly the same as the parent because it is asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction, a little bit different. So uh, most plants that have flowers have both male and female reproductive structures. So the stamen, which is made up of the anther and filament, is the male portion. And the stigma, style, and ovary are part of the pistil, or sometimes called carpal. Um, and that's the female portion. Now, the way sexual reproduction occurs is through uh, pollination. That is the transfer of pollen from the anther, the male portion of one flower, to the stigma, uh, the female portion, of the same flower or another flower. Some flowers can uh, cross-pollinate, some of them can self-pollinate, uh, just depends on how that happens. So um, the pollination, once that occurs, you end up getting fertilization. The pollen gets trapped in a sticky substance 
on the top of the stigma, and then it grows a pollen tube that leads it down uh, the pistil and into the ovary at the very bottom there. That is fertilization, the union of the pollen and the ovule to form that zygote. Now, um, the, another thing we have to understand is about seeds and how they germinate. So germination of seeds is when you, you plant a seed in the ground and then it starts growing a little plant, right? Now, uh, the seed portions that we need to understand are the actual embryo portion, uh, which is the young plant. Then there is the large portion of the seed, which is called the cotyledon, or that's the food source. And then, of course, there's the protective covering or the seed coat that helps make sure uh, everything is protected, the embryo itself is protected. Now, um, the, the last thing we need to understand is how these seeds get dispersed. So we know in pollination, uh, bees help pollinate and uh, birds can help pollinate, uh, wind can help pollinate. Well, that's very much uh, similar with seeds, except there are a couple differences here. So seed dispersal can happen through wind if you have very light seeds. Um, also, certain animals will actually uh, eat the seeds or bury them, like you see some squirrels do. And then also um, plant-eating animals will actually eliminate the solid waste or the feces that actually has some seeds in it. So they eat a plant in one area and then go to another area and uh, eliminate their feces. So that's a couple ways that seeds get dispersed and how uh, plants reproduce sexually.